Welcome, I'm the Word Nerd, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a word study, so a Bible word study. So this is for, like, if you're Bible journaling or verse mapping, I had requests on, like, to just do more of an in-depth on how you actually do the word study and how you choose a word and whatnot. So in that video, in this video, not that video, <laughs> in this video, we are going to be doing that, um, and we're going to be using this KJV Journal the Word Bible, so this is a journaling Bible, and it's really pretty, um, so we're going to be using that, and so inside I have the How to Study the Bible Bible Journaling for Beginners Guide, so I just came out with this recently. Um, it has word studies, and it talks about word studies, but it it doesn't go like step by step on what to do with it. So this is going to be a video that kind of goes more in depth on the actual step by step. And I'm going to do it in real time to just show you. And I created a new free PDF downloadable template on my website. Um, on the website, it's word study for verse mapping or Bible journaling. And you can always cut this out and like tape it into your Bible. So you'll have it inside and not just stick it in with a piece of paper. Because this one is just one, one page. Um, so that's an option. So, how to choose a word? Uh, well, I choose it by a word that pops out to you in your reading. So, let's just say I'm reading Romans, and I'm just reading, reading, and then this word pops out to me. So, I'm going to do a word study on it. Maybe you're reading, and then you look at a different translation, and you notice that that word is translated differently in another translation. That's going to be a reason why I would verse or do a word study on it. Maybe it's just a word you don't understand. That's a good word to do uh, a word study on. Maybe you, it's a word like you just want greater understanding. And especially I do this with verbs when God is telling us to do something, uh, something that we should do. I like to do word studies on that. So we're going to be doing a word study on Romans 4, verse 16. And it's going to be the word imputeth. So I use the King James to study. And so you don't have to use the King James to study, but I do recommend a word-for-word -word translation. I recommend if you don't use the, um, the King James to study, I recommend that you use the ESV uh, or the NASB. Um, I kind of like the ESV better, but that's kind of a preference thing. So after that, you're going to do some research on the word. Now, how you mark it in your Bible is up to you, so don't really, I'm not really paying too much attention about that part for this video. Um, so, I'm going to be using my tablet, and I'm going to be using the Blue Letter Bible app. I have a tutorial on this app. If you're not sure exactly how to use it, uh, check out those. I actually have two, one from years and years ago, and one more recently, like a couple of months ago, I think. So, I'm going to pick Romans 4, and then I'm going to go down to verse um, 6. Now, you can see I always have my Blue Letter Bible app in parallel mode to where I can read the KJV and the NLT at the same time. But if you click the verse and then you click uh, translation comparison, all these different comparisons will pop up. And so this is a great quick way to look and see what each translation is translated that word as. Now, it's up to you what you write down. <laughs> so, that's a preference thing as well. But for me, if I'm doing a word study and I find that multiple Bible translations translate it differently, then I'm going to write it down. So, the NLT translates imputeth as declared and I don't like that translation at all. Um, I do recommend reading the NLT but I don't recommend studying it and this is the reason why. <laughs> but it's really good for reading. Um, then the ESV says counts so it's count uh, righteousness. And then the NIV, CSB, and the NET and the NASV it translates this word imputeth in the KJV into credits. Um, so I'm going to write down each of those and we will jump into a the next step. Now how you mark your Bible again it is completely up to you. So for me when I do a word study I like to box in a word that's 
how I mark my Bible. You can do what you want. I used to circle words, but now I box them in. So, <laughs> and then on the side, I'm just going to write like the translation and then the word that the translation um, translated this word into. Now, I don't read Greek, don't know Greek, so this is why I have to use it this way. I do plan on taking Greek with Kairos Classroom eventually. Right now, I'm in Hebrews, and there's four classes for Hebrews, and so I'm in the second class, so I have a while to go before I'm able to even get into Greek, um, but I do plan on taking it. Um, that's not something you have to do, but if you are interested, I would definitely recommend checking out Cairo's Classroom. I had a, I have a few videos on them. They're really awesome. The teachers are amazing. They're always ready to help you. There's no tests. There's no, like, calling on you kind of thing. And it's just really awesome. Um, they're just really awesome, you know, and they're much more affordable than, you know, going to seminary or something like that. So after you get done with writing down the English Bible translations, we're going to go back to the Blue Letter Bible app. You're going to click on the verse again, and you're going to click the top option, which is interlinear. This is going to bring you to the Strong's information. So a Strong's number is just where a person with the last name, I think his first name was John, I have no idea, but Strong's, his last name was Strong's, and he numbered each of the Bible words. And so it helps us to dig deeper into the word by keeping track of these words. And so that's what the Strong's number is. So G stands for Greek, so we're in the New Testament, it's in Greek. So if you're in the Old Testament, it's going to have an H next to that number. It just means Hebrew. Then you're going to look at the part of speech. So this is a verb. So Diff words can be nouns and verbs in English, so you want to make sure that you we're going to define the word in a minute, and we're going to we want to make sure that we know get the right definition for the right part of speech. Now, you also want to look at the root word. So, and I like to continue until you get what says a root word or um, I. I think it says root word. Um, so this word actually comes from logos, or logos, however you want to say it. And that just means word, right? God, uh, Jesus is called the logos, which is the word. Um, and I didn't feel the need to put it there because, again, I don't speak Greek. So some of it just doesn't hit with me and I now sometimes I do I'm like oh wow that word connects you know I didn't um I mean you can write it down I just didn't so after that you are going to look at the KJV translation count of the word and this tells you what this word this Greek word was translated into English and you're going to just kind of write those down so, it was translated 41 times, so it's 41 times in the New Testament, and it was translated as think nine times, impute eight times, reckon six times, count five times, account four times, suppose twice, reason once, and then there was a few other miscellaneous, and I just kind of left that off, and what I do when I don't write everything down, I just put three dots, and I know that that means there's other miscellaneous translations of that word, but I don't need to write it down or I don't want to write it down. Like you do you, you can write it down if you don't. But for me, I don't see a need to. They're miscellaneous uh, translations and it's all, you know, according to context and things. So I want to get the big ones and so that's why I write those down. So after that, we're going to do a definition. So we're going to define the word. Now, my favorite is using the Webster 1828 there's a free app you can get, and I also like looking at the Merriam-Webster Dictionary as well. Again, it's a free app you can download onto your phone. Um, I prefer the Webster 1828, um, but I do look at both um, before I write down a definition most of the time. Not all the time, because like I said, <laughs> the Webster 1828 is my favorite, and it is a favorite among Bible nerds. Um, so... 
you, you can choose what you want to use, you know what I'm saying? Um, but once you get the definition that you like, um, or choose Merriam-Webster or Webster 1828 Dictionary, you write those down. Now, I write the ones down that are relevant or could be relevant, if that makes sense. So, they're going to say, like, definition one, definition two, definition three. I like to write most or all of them down. And you'll see that here. Uh, that's what I do. I'm going to, I make a big kind of, like, dash mark. And that lets me know that now I'm changing into a definition. So, to charge, to attribute, to set to the account of, to ascribe, to reckon to one what does not belong to them so this gives a much more in-depth understanding of when it says even as David also described the blessedness of the man whom God imputeth righteousness without works so God accounts it or reckons it to you even though you don't it's not you don't uh, words are hard. So, it doesn't belong to you because you're not righteous, right? We're no, none of us are righteous. We, we've all have sinned. We've all fall short. So, the righteousness doesn't belong to us, but God credits or God counts righteousness toward us, um, without works. And that is what Jesus paid for, right? Our faith is counted as righteousness, um, which is further in uh, in verse 3 of chapter 4 in Romans, it says, For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So belief or faith, it can be both, uh, was counted for righteousness. So our righteousness that's being imputed is our faith is counting as righteousness until we are able to actually do righteousness. With a, it's in, either in First John or James, he that doeth righteousness is righteous. Um, so, now after you get done with writing the definitions, I also like to look up the words that the other translations have uh, translated as. So I looked at NLT declared, and it was nowhere near this definition, any of them. It was not good. I also look up counts, and counts actually has similar to reckon, to place to the account, to ascribe or impute, to consider or esteem as belonging. So it is a lot closer to this definition. Now, when the NIV, CSB, and the NET uh, translated as credits, I could not find any definition that was close to these that we've come to by counts and imputeth, which is the KJB. So, I do definitely recommend using a word-for-word -word translation, and I do recommend using KJV, ESV, or something, maybe the NASB, um, to do your word studies and Bible studies. Now, Bible reading... Just read what's easy for you to understand. But Bible study, when you're digging deeper, I think you need a word-for-word -word translation. Because when you're doing word studies and digging deep into the words, you're going deeper than just kind of getting the main points, which is kind of like what reading is. That's why I recommend the NLT. It's really easy to read. It's in modern English, but you're not going to do in-depth study of it. You're going to get an overall view of what the narrative or what the scriptures are saying. But when you're digging deeper, like we, like with a word study, you need the closest translation that you can get to. And that's why I use the KJV and the ESV is my favorite for those. So, I hope this inspired and encouraged you to dig deeper. I hope this helped. Um, I know I got a lot of people saying I still don't understand how to do word studies. And so I hope this helps you guys. Um, I hope that it uh, encourages you to study the Bible on your own. If you have any more recommendations on videos that will help you to dig deeper into the word. Or maybe videos that you just need slowed down and kind of focus on. Just leave it in the comments. Right? And... Remember, God loves you, and he's always with you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!